Hello, beautiful people. My name is Delbert Richardson, community scholar, second generation storyteller. I am the owner and curator of the American History Traveling Museum, The Unspoken Truth. I want to take you on a journey through time, starting with ancient Africa, going through American chattel slavery, the Jim Crow era, and finishing off with an honoring section called Still We Rise by the great Queen Maya Angelou. I want to start with ancient Africa. I want to talk to you about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. But I want to add an A to it for art, because I believe there's a design function for each discipline. But before I talk about that, let me explain to you why I call it American history. If I called it black history, there will be some people that may think that this history doesn't pertain to me. If I call it African-American history, there may be some that say that history has nothing to do with me. We call it American history. It makes it all inclusive. Plus, it allows me to see myself in the story. Some may ask, why do you start with ancient Africa and call it American history? Aha, I want to make sure we start off with a positive foundation of identity. So if I'm an African-American, the question usually comes up, why haven't I learned anything positive about the African part of my name? We're going to do that today by starting with ancient Egypt. Here we have Imhotep, who's the first documented physician and architect of the world. This is Africa, Mother Africa, the birthplace of civilization. But this is also STEM. I know a lot of you are aware of the pyramid. Isn't this an example of science, technology, engineering, and math? I see you nodding your head. But here's the question. Why haven't we ever been taught that our ancient ancestors were extremely responsible for STEM that we're now taught in schools? So here you have in one storyboard math, science, engineering, architecture. This is our history. Second storyboard we talk about is this glider. I know a lot of you may be studying history soon, and let's talk about the Wright brothers, who were responsible for some of the first individuals to fly in North America. But wait, this is a glider that's 2,000 years old. What does that say? That our ancestors were spearmen with flight 2,000 years ago. No, I didn't know that either. So the question I want to ask is, his story, whose story is being told? And last but not least, this is a storyboard that really impacted my life. And it says, most of us assume that two cities, Athens and Rome, dominated the classical world and set Western culture on its present course. But there was a third that at its height dwarfed both of these in scientific and an artistic achievement, Alexandria of Egypt. While Athens and Rome spread their influence through trade and war, Alexandria, or the African, sought to conquer the mind. We were obsessed with learning. Not only here where we uh, realized the Earth was not flat, we invented geometry, and we were the first ones to navigate the Earth. Now, something happened. We went from being this dominant, amazing people that spread the influence through the entire world, and we were captured and stolen from our land. So I want to introduce you to the next session. I want to share with you, we just left Mother Africa, and we're talking about this amazing foundation of individuals that had basically changed the world through science, technology, engineering, and math. But what I want to do now is just take you to part of this timeline that was really a disruption in our brilliance. A lot of you know it as slavery, but I want to help us with our language. I want to call it the enslavement period. Because when we say enslavement period, what it does, it creates this box or 
How about it makes it clear that this doesn't define who we are. So we weren't slaves, we were enslaved. I'm gonna say that again. We were never slaves, we were enslaved. This was done to us, not did to ourselves. So what I brought was a couple of artifacts that are authentic, that represents some of the harsh treatment. Now I know it may be difficult, however, I think it's so important that we revisit the history in a way to have a better understanding. This is a shackle for a child or a woman, and this is for an adult. These are called middle passage shackles, and these are the ones that our ancestors would wear on the ships. I know this is difficult, it may also bring up some emotions, but this is a cross section of a slave ship. This shows the inhumane treatment that was put upon us. And the one of the reasons why I want to share this is so we can start to understand the shoulders that we stand on and what's our responsibility of honoring those that don't have the opportunities that we have. Here we have Harriet Tubman, and she would represent resistance. She freed quite a few of her family and fellow enslaved people on the plantation. This is very, very important that we understand that this is just a segment of our history. So let's not look at it as slavery, let's look at it at the enslavement period. The next section is called Jim Crow. You may know it as civil rights, but basically Jim Crow was a caste system that created laws that made us very difficult for us to navigate society because we were treated less than human. So there are signs here, colored only, blacks can't eat here. All this was created to restrict us and to control us. But the most important part of these two sections is for you to understand that our ancestors paid a heavy price for our opportunity. And this picture here is probably one of the most important pictures. This student has books in her hand. All she wanted to do was get an education. So I want to ask you the question, what sacrifices have our ancestors made for us to have these opportunities? I want you to really hold on to that because it was illegal to read, it was illegal to write. But now you have an opportunity, and I want us to really embrace this opportunity, if nothing else, to show them that their sacrifice didn't go in vain. So I'm going to share with you in the next story, in spite of everything we've been through, our ancestors made a decision to change the world through math, science, engineering, and technology. Come with me. Hello, beautiful people. We've just come through some very difficult times. That would be the American Child Slavery section and Jim Crow. But guess what? We're not gonna focus on that part of our history. We're gonna talk about the amazing endurance, perseverance, and courage. And that's represented in the section behind me called Blacks in STEM. So I wanna point out a couple of amazing individuals that have changed the world. Mae Jamerson, astronaut and physician. I want to read you a quote. This is in our own words. And she's speaking to you. Don't let anyone rob you of your imagination, your creativity, or your curiosity. It's your place in the world. It's your life. Make it the life you want to live. Next person is Mr. James Wilkins, mathematician, inventor, Mr. Gerald Lawson. Why is he so important? He created the first console for video games. You know my Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox? We owe this ancestor a debt of gratitude because of his amazing brilliance. He developed the first console video game. Here's a quote by him. 
you've got to step away from the crowd and go do your own thing. You find the ground, cover it, it's brand new. You're on your own, you're an explorer. Next one is Ursula Barnes, businesswoman engineer. Beautiful people, here are some more amazing African Americans. Neil deGrasse Tyson, astrophysicist and author. Donna August, inventor and businesswoman. Kate Akakuyu, mathematician and educator. And Mark Dean, computer scientist. I want to leave you with a few words of encouragement. It's one of my many books. It's called A Book, A Kid Book About Belonging. What does it mean to belong? It's difficult to come up with a simple answer, but each of us, kid and grown-ups, is hoping every day to belong somewhere. While belonging can be tough to describe, we all know the benefits. Belonging to a community of others improves your health, happiness, and motivation. When you belong, you realize you are not alone. Having a connection to others helps you understand that all of us can have good times, but struggle too. There is comfort in knowing we all have things in common. To build community, a sense of belonging, and be comfortable in our own skin is a lifelong endeavor. This book wants to help our journey. Your journey because belonging starts with you. Love yourself. Accept yourself, like yourself, appreciate yourself, care for yourself, and please support others. Thank you.